what's going on guys it's your Bobby Dillon and welcome back to another division video today I've got something pretty simple for you guys and that is a returning player guide to the division now quick little disclaimer before we get into the video I've only just been playing this game now for three weeks I've only just started playing again myself and that is why I'm trying to make this video and um, hopefully it helps a few people because when I first started playing the game it was quite confusing didn't really understand what activities I should be playing, where was the best places to get sort of you know certain resources that I needed for recalibration, optimization, farming gear sets, farming exotics, all that sort of stuff. So hopefully this video will help a few people, you know, if you're starting to play the game again yourself, hopefully it'll ease you into it um, a little bit better than when I started playing the game again. So now that's out of the way, um, let's just get straight to it. So I want to try and you know, keep this video as short and simple as possible. So, first things first is you're going to want to hit level 30. So, if you're starting a new character, complete the campaign, do all the main missions, do all of the encounters, and you should be level 30. When you hit level 30, you will, uh, I can't even speak, you will unlock world tiers. Now, world tiers are essentially increasing the difficulty of the game. The higher the world tier, the more difficult the game, but the more rewarding the game becomes so you're going to want to try and get to world tier 5 as quickly as possible so try and get through the first four tiers as fast as, as you can uh, in all honesty don't waste your time in them get to world tier 5 as quickly as possible as soon as you hit world tier 5 the game begins uh, that's when the true end game starts that's when the grind begins that's when you can start earning classified gear sets all that sort of good stuff which we will get to in a second so the first thing I do every single day when I log on to this game is I will go through and I will complete sort of a world run, I guess you could say, which is farming world tier bosses. Now, you can probably go on Google, um, if you go on Google Images and type in, you know, the division world tier bosses um, and it'll bring up a map for you with all of the locations of all of the bosses for you. Um, but I'm just going to sort of go through and sort of show you where the majority of them are off the top of my head. Um, so what you can do is fast travel to the safe house and one will be usually, is it here? I'm pretty sure it's uh, right there where my waypoint is. It's either there or there. Can't remember off the top of my head. Haven't done it in a few days um, with Christmas and stuff being around. But I'm pretty sure it's there. And then as soon as you killed that guy, I think it's called, Bu he is called Bullet King. You're going to want to fast travel down here to the safe house and then soon no not the safe house what am i doing my mind is completely bamboozled you're going to want to fuck <laughs> you're going to want to quick travel to this mission i'm her apartment you're going to spawn facing the mission so what you're going to do is you're going to go down the street here go down here then there'll be like a, a basketball court here um just down this left hand side here there'll be a big cleaner boss kill him turn back around come back down the street Go down here. Now behind here, there'll be another boss that you can kill. Um, you go like down here somewhere. There'll be some um, steps that you can go down. And it'll be sort of like down where the train is or something like that. Um, so you kill that one. And then once you've killed him, you go put your waypoint like over here somewhere. And you can pretty much just sprint there. Um, or you can fast travel to the safe house. Completely up to you. Um, but I find it just easier just to run there. Um, so there'll be another boss there. As soon as I've killed that one, I usually quick travel to this mission here, and there is one down here. Now, you go in the underground, down the street, um, so you follow it, and then I think you sort of turn right, and then he'll be literally just spawning right to your right as soon as you turn around the corner. That's another boss that you can kill really quickly as well. After that one, I usually quick travel... Um, to this mission here, Madison Field Hospital, this is a pretty quick one. Put your waypoint there, there'll be another boss there, and then you sprint over here, climb over a fence that's roughly here, go down this little alleyway here, go down here, and there'll be another boss down here as well, somewhere um, down this back alleyway. Um, then you want to quick travel over here, and then there'll be another boss right there where that waypoint is. Then I usually run all the way down here go down the street here and then there'll be another boss right there then I quick travel to the safe house 
and then there is another boss roughly I think there um, if I remember correctly like sort of in this U shape here there will be another big boss um, then I quick travel to this mission once you've quick traveled to this mission you're going to run down the street and there should be another boss here somewhere then you're going to quick travel up to this door in the dark zone the checkpoint there will be another boss here somewhere about halfway down the street probably about there once you've killed that one there is one I think about here somewhere then once you've done that one there is one here and then once you've done that one there is one like up this street here somewhere if I remember correctly you can just sort of run up here go down there and it's up here along this road and um, just off to the left hand side somewhere um, and yeah, that's all of the world tier bosses. Now, I do that every single day when I log onto this game. You just run around the map killing the bosses. They have, I think it's a 6% drop chance for exotics. Um, they can drop um, classified gear sets as well, although it is very, very low. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's the first thing I do every single day. Get Phoenix credits out of it, get some gear out of it. Again, if you're only just sort of reaching into World Tier 5, it can be a very good source to get some new gear to sort of boost your gear score up. Maybe try and get a gear set put together, you know, maybe a little bit of a build. Um, and yeah, that's sort of the first thing I do every single day when I log on. Next thing to keep track of, if you go to the Mission Overview tab, is your assignments. Now, the daily assignments, if you can do all four every single day, you'll get 100 Division Tech in total. You usually get 25 Division Tech for doing each and every each one of these so do bear that in mind the weekly assignments if you can do these as well these are very very good sources for exotics you are guaranteed an exotic out of each of the weeklies so try and complete them if you can and they also reward 100 division tech each next thing is the underground now if you have all of the expansions for the game doing the underground a thing that i do that to sort of um, makes the grind a little bit easier so you don't have to do t you know each you, know, you don't have to do the daily up hard and the daily up challenging you don't have to do them separate just load in on challenging difficulty put all five of the directives on and then go complete it and then you'll get both of the dailies done at once luckily I can solo them so it's not that hard you may have to try and match make and invite some people in if you are struggling with that but if you don't have the underground DLC you don't even have to bother with it anyway so don't worry um, so yeah next thing is the daily missions now you can do the daily missions if you want to it's not a necessity you don't have to but it is a great source of credits XP um, gear uh, you can get some bonus Phoenix credits um, that you can spend on items and stars and all that sort of stuff so completely up to you if you want to do the dailies I sort of do them here and there as of when I can be bothered now the next things sort of getting into what activities you should be playing um, to sort of earn gear um, at a decent rate now when I first started playing this game again I was slightly confused as to what activities I should be playing so to put it short and simple the best places to get the best items like classified gear sets which is a six piece gear sets um, is probably the resistance a lot of people go PN 93 in my opinion PN 93 is the easiest one um, to do uh, there's a really good camping spot on it which a lot of people will usually go to so if you just sort of follow your teammates around you know more than likely they'll camp down this hallway and the enemies sort of come to you um, and yeah so every five waves you get a bonus cash and you get these come in tiers so there's like I think the normal one then there's tier 2, tier 3, tier 4, tier 5 obviously the higher tier the cash the better loot you get in it um, those caches are really good for exotic drop chances. I can't remember exactly what it is. I'll look at it right now. I've got like a thing on my computer. So the reward crates offer a 23% chance at an exotic item, um, which is insane, to be honest. Now, classified gear sets come at different rates. So there's like 12.5% for tier 2, 15% for tier 3, 20% for tier 4, and 80% for tier 5. Usually, most people play until about wave 15 or 20. Most people don't usually play past that just because it gets quite hard. Um, and people just sort of want to rinse and repeat, you know, the first 15, 20 waves. That's just optimal farming for you. That's just sort of how the game goes. Um, 
So yeah, Resistance is definitely one of the best places to get gear um, if you're trying to get a good gear set and collect the exotics in the game. The next place, surprisingly enough, is actually for me personally, the Underground. Um, the Underground, I've had loads of good luck from this. I've had a lot of good um, classified gear sets from this, um, or gear set pieces, should I say. Um, I've had loads of my, i actually say most of my exotic weapons drop from the Underground. Um, the bosses, um, just to so you know, can't actually drop named gear set like armor pieces, and um, they only drop the weapons in the underground. So it's a really good source for farming the exotic weapons. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and yeah, I mean that's the main two things I play for farming classified gear sets and exotics. Um, to play plain and simple. Um, a lot of people are having trouble with survival. I know a lot of people really do struggle with it. Um, so yeah, survival is actually pretty decent for loot, um, but I, like I said, I don't really play it too much, so I haven't really, you know, had that much experience with what it's like for rewards. PvP, I've never played PvP, as you can see, I think I've played one game of PvP my entire life on this game, so, um, yeah. Next thing is the high value targets. Now, once you sort of get your gear set up quite a lot and you start to become more powerful you start to breeze through sort of the challenging missions you're starting to trade into the legendary difficulty you know maybe you've cleared a legendary difficulty mission try and do the weekly high value targets and um, give them a go um, i know it can be quite tedious to get the target intel um which i'll go over a way that you can find the target intel in a second so there's I think the four easier difficulties and then there's four with this high risk targets now the high risk target ones are going to be very very difficult um depending like i said on how experienced you are with the game and how good your build is overall um so definitely give them a go um it's definitely worth a shot as you can see you get a good enough amount of phoenix credits for it and you get gear sets and equipment items for it as well so it's a really good source for gear overall Come on back when you want There's to also dailies, but I never really bother with those. Um, but actually, to be honest, if you are fairly new to the game, this might be a pretty decent way to sort of ease your way into the game. Um, dailies are usually pretty easy. Um, so yeah, give these a shot if you want. So the way you farm Come target on, intel you is if you go to your world map, and as you can see, your daily missions, there'll be three daily missions, and they have this like circle with four arrows that spin around um, every couple of seconds. There'll be a safe house exactly like that. It's got a circle with the four little arrows. Go to this safe house first, there'll be a situation board in there. Collect it, and then there'll be like three targets that you've got to kill within this sort of area. Go kill all three targets, fast travel back to the safe house, turn it into the um, situation board, and then you'll get target intel. Now most people just go to any safe house and that is not the optimal way to farm the target intel. Always go to the safe house that has the circle with the spinning thing on first and then that will basically change and move around the map. So once you've done this one, the circle might move to this safe house so then you go to that one. And then it might move over here, then you go to that one. So that's how you farm your target intel. Can be quite tedious and boring, um, but it is what it is. Next thing I will go over is sort of, as suppose you could say, how crafting, recalibration, and optimization station work. Um, now crafting, I pretty much never use a crafting station. I think crafting, for the most part, is pretty much dead in this game. Um, it's not like it was when the game first came out where that's pretty much all you did. You know, you made all of your gear in the crafting station and tried to get god rolls the easy way. So yeah, crafting for the most part is pretty much dead. You farm for your gear now. Um, now, recalibration is pretty much the same as it used to be um, if you played The Division a while back. But if you didn't, what the cal recalibration station is, is you can re-roll perks and stats on armor. So for example, if I've got the sniper here, I've got destructed, elevated, but I want to change toxic, so I can re-roll this talent. Bear in mind, if you have a weapon you can only re-roll one perk so for example i've re-rolled this toxic perk now so i'm locked into that slot i cannot re-roll destructive or elevated i am locked into the slot 
um, if that makes any sense. So, for example, I don't know, let's just put a random perk on it for now because I don't really care. Let's just put commanding on it because I don't care. Um, so that's how you recalibrate items. Um, you, know, you can do it for weapons um, and armor pieces. Now, armor pieces are a little bit different. Now, classified um, armor pieces, you can reroll two stats on the armor piece. So, for example, my striker mask here, I've got the stamina rerolled. I tried to reroll the stamina to be higher, and then I rerolled the da you know for damage to elites. So you can reroll two. If you only have you know a a normal class item or a high end like a yellow um so basically this this high end right here right for example if i was going to use this um let's say stamina skill haste um health and kills pretty decent maybe you want like enemy armor damage um so skill haste if i was just going to sort of um, go for bit more of a DPS, so I'll try and re-roll this and get, you know, enemy armor damage. Now, as you can see, because it's a high end, I can only re-roll one stat. So, you know, sort of bear it in mind, it takes a little bit to learn it, maybe I've not explained it too well, but hopefully you sort of get the general gist of it, you can re-roll stats um, on the armor pieces and your weapons. Um, if it's classified, like I said, you can re-roll two slots. If it's a high end or just a normal gear set item, it is... Um, Oh, you can only re-roll one slot. So, bear that in mind. Um, I don't know how exotics works because I've never actually re-rolled an exotic, so I'm not going to cover them because I don't want to screw people over. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Next thing is the optimization station. This is how you increase um, the stats on certain pieces of gear and you level up the gear score on said item. So, for example, my knee pads for my striker is fully optimized. Now, if I was to go down to sort of say my reclaimer um it costs 250,000 credits and 50 division tech every single time i want to optimize a said piece of gear so what this station does is it will increase if you can see all of the green bars like there's four green bars in like multiple areas like next to the score at the top the armor the firearms enemy armor damage burn resistance damage to elites blind and death resistance that's what you optimize now what it means by optimize is it will raise the stats on all of those and it will increase the gear score of the item overall. The higher the stats, the higher the gear score on the item. I know that's a mouthful, but hopefully that sort of explains it as you know easily as possible. Do not, and I repeat, do not waste your division tech and optimizing gear. Make sure if you're gonna optimize a piece of gear that it is a very, very good roll. Because division tech is definitely not easy to come by. Um, it's still quite, you know, a very hard resource to farm. Um, in some cases, I mean, if you play a lot of Dark Zone, it's pretty easy to get. But if you're like me, I mainly play a PvE, so, you know, it's pretty difficult <laughs> um, for me to farm it in large quantities. So, hey, anything you're looking for? yeah, I mean, that's pretty much a lot of the key stuff, I'd say. Um, other things to keep track of um, that I would definitely mm -hmm. recommend. If you are returning to this game, try and complete the Division Shields. Um, if you, Every single time you complete one of these, they'll have pretty much... You know, the, all of them are pretty easy to do. None of them are super difficult, um, other than really, I think it's... The Fang Shield, which is to complete all of the missions in Legendary, um, which can be difficult to get. Collect three full gear sets. Um, and again, these two aren't out yet. Um... And yeah, I mean, the survival one, again, I need to play the more survival to get that done. Um, commendation score, to get the commendation score, again, there's a commendation page where as you go through, complete all the commendations um, and you get points for it. That's how you get that shield. So every single time you complete one of these shields, you will be rewarded with a division shield cache. In that cache, I think you are guaranteed two classified pieces of armor you have, I think it's a very small chance to receive an exotic. You get 2,000 Phoenix credits and I think 500 division tech, if I remember correctly. That's just, we're trying to remember off the top of my head. Basically, just try and complete as many of the shields as possible because it gives you a butt ton of resources and, you know, it can offer you some classified gear as well. So, definitely try and complete them if you can. 
Now, getting into builds and from what I've seen most people using, um, now this is strictly PvE. I do not play the Dark Zone, I do not play PvP, so I do not know how the game functions um, in its PvP side of things. But for PvE, a couple of really good gear sets to try and get yourself is definitely the Striker. This is very, very good for just overall DPS. Um, I like to run it with Pulse and the Flashbang. The Flashbang basically stuns all the enemies, allows you to get your stacks up and just melt pretty much through all of the enemies, um, to put it plain and simple. Tactician, this is for soloing legendary missions and pretty much just annihilating everything with skills. I never ever use Tactician if I'm in a team. Um, in my personal opinion, it's better as a solo build. Um, the main reason for that is just because the more people that are in your team, um, the more health the enemies have, the, you know, the more difficult the enemies are, so you can't one-shot them. Um, so that's why I use this build for solo play. Um, like I said, it's just a lot of fun just to mess around with. Sentries, um, haven't got the right weapons on. I need like an urban MDR. Sentries is really good. You can get um, stacks out on the enemies. The more stacks on the enemy, the more damage the team can do to said enemy. Um, it's just really good overall. Lone Star, if you've got some good LMGs and you can basically customize this for, I think, a crit hit chance and crit hit damage build. And it just melts through enemies. Reclaimer, this is your healer set. Um, Reclaimer is a very, very, very good gear set to have in legendary missions. At least one player, um, in my opinion, needs to be running Reclaimer. Just so you can heal um, everyone and just sort of keep them on the front line so that you don't have to constantly fall back all the time. Um, Hunter's Faith is a really good PvE sniper set as well. Um, I think Deadeye is more of a PvP one um, from what I've seen, so Hunter's Faith is a you know PvE sniper set. Um, these are the gear sets that I use, but the main three that I go for is Striker, Tactician, and Sentry's Call, um, just because, I don't know, I just really enjoy how they play. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, there's nothing really too much else to go over. Um, in all honesty, I think that's the core of the game really i mean that you know if wh when i was playing the game um, about three weeks ago when i started playing the game again i just wish i knew half the information that i've you know told you guys in this video as always i may not have gone over everything i may have missed things out again i've not been playing it long myself um so hopefully it makes your time at playing the game a little bit easier and uh, hey guys thank you so much for watching have an awesome rest of your day as always, and uh, yeah, peace.